Yeah, we on Boss Talk One on One. Um, so mayhem. When you uh, you you say you was not uh, you at eighteen you you put the cripping down. How did you do time uh, uh, separating yourself from the different groups of people that one day at a time? No, I, I, I didn't hear that. <laughs> no, when I got, no, when I got in the prison, <laughs> when I got in the prison, prison had a lot of niggas who was claiming to be crips. Like he was saying, I ain't, I ain't locked seat with nobody. I don't know who you <laughs> is. Yeah, who is you? Like you say, who is you? I don't know you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you a crip, but you ain't did no work like me. I don't know you like that. You ain't yeah. did no drive-bys. You ain't robbed nobody. You ain't did nothing to me. So don't try to come up here and lock seeds with me talking about your set. I was locked in with people from Cleburne and Killeen, Texas. and mm -hmm. Johnson yeah, they County. Was, they was made all type of Black Panther gangster crip. One dude told me you were Black Panther gangster crip. I mean, I was just... So the more I got in prison and got around, because everybody in prison was is not real. Everybody And I went to prison back in the night. See, this is like he was telling me, it's a new prison now. I went to prison, and prison taught me one thing. See, and another thing that I want to talk about too, I didn't gang bang in prison. I never had the gang bang. That's what, that's what I was asking about. I, I was a man before anything else, and I was in numerous race rides, and I'm glad that I was in race rides, like he was talking about, because one thing about, see, and my, I came from in, back in the 90s when prison was violent. When I walked into the TDC, they said, you're going to fuck, fight, or bust a 60. The law told you that. Not no inmate. The officer told you that. Then they said, get into the day room. I was 18. I was a, a, a powder pink nigga walking in there. Well, they just cut my hair off. They, I looked friendly than the mud. And, you know, I told you people got a line, and I had to introduce myself immediately and let them know this is who I am. And that's why people are like, okay, well, that's why I didn't have to crib. When I, you know, when you go in there fighting, everybody embraces you. Everybody embraces it. You go in there punching a nigga in the face for disrespecting you, the nigga like, I like that nigga. And I'm from the city. I'm from the city. Everybody knew me. I came in with a reputation. I came in. The, everywhere I went, I already knew people on every unit I went on. I knew somebody from the street. And they were like, nigga, you ain't crippling? I was like, I ain't crippling. They were like, all right, cool. You know what I'm saying? Nobody questioned it. I mean, people kind of liked it. Like, he would under. If I went around here in person, I said, hey, Percy, what's up? And you're like, man, I, I gang bang with and you. And I told Percy, I said, yeah, Brian, I'm doing my time. I ain't gang banging. He going to say, I understand. You a lie. No, I'm just saying. Not no, the unit I'm listen, on. The no, unit no. I'm on. Listen, you, was, you listen. was on Ferguson. You was on, on Cofield. I was on Cofield, so I don't know. You, you on know, Cofield? I was on Cofield. Well, I was Beto, on Raska unit. Terraford unit. I was on Ferguson. Listen, I was on, I was on the Smith unit. With, he talking about the biggest ride in state jail. Right? I was on the biggest ride in TDC, period. With the on Styles on on Smith Unit with the with the, on April two thousand with the with the essays right, but one thing I I loved about being in this I hated I hated being in there, but the wisdom and knowledge in this, in that ride I seen niggas who we did not get along with come together. Yeah, you feel me? I seen black people who were Crips bloods and everything. They came together immediately for for the sake of all of us. And I, like I say, this is in in prison. You hear me? So when, when I seen that, it, it, it let me know that despite what people say, when black people are in compromising positions, they do come together. And they come together, and a lot of times they only come together in that situation when something goes bad. When something goes bad in prison between, like you say, when somebody violates the races, don't matter what, who, who you don't like. As black people, we unite quick. Let me ask you this, guys, because I got to ask this question before we end this. How do we, how do we help affect keeping our people, our young black men, because the majority of our people are about. in prison. Like I'm when you about. go and look, the black people overpopulate the prison. So how do we try to help to stop them from going to prison? I'll let you go first, uh, Melvin. Well, uh, actually you got to uh, look at the laws which are in prison. And you have to also understand it depends on the demographics and where you're at. Like for California, I speak on California. Uh, we have to get these youths because there's a lot of uh, uh, illegal immigrants over there. We right on the border. A lot of jobs are uh, being taken up where they're being paid up under the table. Uh, and they want you to be bilingual. Uh, the school system is three areas that has to be dressed. Uh, when it comes to inner cities, whether it's uh, where uh, 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 Obama calls it uh, pockets of poverty, that's what he called inner cities across America, or uh, Trump might call it uh, rat infested, like he said, but either way it go, they was talking about communities such as where we at now. Mm -hmm. So it's three areas I think that need to be addressed. The uh, unified school district, that's where congregation and youth all the way up. 
parks and recreation where niggas gather and hold mm -hmm. a uh, sarays, <laughs> and then we got the juvenile justice system. Okay, those three areas has to be uh, 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 addressed, but also. More importantly, you have to go to your elected officials and those that are in power that getting the funding to make sure that funding is going to the proper resources to get what it's directed to. A lot of times we have these organizations, particularly when you got city council members, board of supervisors, state elected officials, they're controlling the funding that comes from the federal government. So we have to know how this works, but we also, you can't go and uh, uh, get somebody to turn their guns in for no concert ticket either. Mm. But they'll turn them in for a gun or where they can feed, they feed themselves. They have more uh, susceptible. If you can feed them, they're willing to listen more so. Mm. So those are three areas of I think need to be teched at all levels from preschool up to the highest <clears throat> level. And we have to start looking at these laws that are being uh, uh, voted on because we don't vote and uh, power in voting. So it's a lot of things, but those are the three areas that I would address on from an inner city standpoint. Thank to try you. To make it. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101.